Web 10, Android Studio Development, the College Network app, Web Services. This is the overview of what we're going to cover in the Web Services Lab. We're going to first set up uh, the local uh, Java Web Services. Now, the reason for this is um, we'll have more configuration uh, uh, control over what we can do with the Web Services if we have it running locally on our machine. Um, normally web services run on the web, on the internet, and uh, that's the power of web services. But for this lab, the nice thing about it is we can uh, just run them locally, have our Android emulator um, actually hit these web services and get data back, get, get data back just like we see uh, Benjamin Franklin and uh, uh, he gets uh, his password is a hundred dollars. His email is Benji at psu.edu, and uh, his phone number. All right, so uh, we're going to do that, but first we got to make sure that Java is uh, installed properly. Make sure we have the runtime environment, which is the JRE. We got to check to make sure the compiler is found in the path, and uh, so there's a little configuration and uh, set up and things that we need to do. Then we'll create a, a Java simple uh, web service and we'll make sure that it's running. Um, we'll build uh, everything that's needed for that, the web services that we'll be calling into. We'll then test it out with the browser. And that's the first part and that really doesn't involve Android, it involves Java uh, coding uh, which uh, I have supplied. Then we'll set up the profile user interface uh, to make sure that that's correct. We'll create uh, a new uh, entity class for profile um, which is the name, password, email, phone. Then in the Android uh, uh, main activity class we need to make sure that we can get to the uh, KSOAP uh, 2 jar which I put on Angel that you can download and uh, we need to put that in the libs folder which is just short for libraries. We'll import the KSOAP2 classes, and this allows us to make SOAP uh, web service calls. We'll find the UI profile fields, name, password, email, phone. We'll configure the on-click uh, profile. So when you actually click on the, uh, the, the profile over here, right, that, um, that's the code that is going to execute when we click on that. Then we'll set up the inner private class called uh, download task and this is actually kind of a part of being uh, threaded uh, with the networking aspect of it. We're going to try to do something in the background which is make our web service call and then when it does come back um, it'll be uh, in the on post execute method will be when it fires off and then we'll update the view and if everything goes well we should see exactly what we see right here. We see name with Benjamin Franklin, his password, his email, and then a phone number. And that is our task for today. So let's start out. First thing we want to do is open up a command prompt uh, window, uh, command uh, terminal or uh, dash shell, depends on who you talk to. Um, really, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is just search for it and uh, um, when I search for it here, right, I'm just going to say search and cmd exe and command prompt comes up. And uh, I already have it uh, set up. I have uh, uh, two set up right now. And what's so nice about uh, both of these, uh, one you can see I've got, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, clear, let's clear that and let's get the uh, address. So the address right now, this is the IP address that I have. Um, I just ran IP config and I piped the output of this, which then goes into the next command, find, and I said find IP uh, v4 for version 4 address. And this PC address is 192.168.1.6. And that's really important that we know that. So I have two command window uh, shells open that you can just run it twice. And then the other one is where we're going to do some of our coding. And right now, uh, you can see I'm in uh, users, folks, and I created a JWS for Java Web Services directory. 
All right, so the first thing we want to do is check the Java version. So just type in java-version. It's uh, pretty easy. And uh, we'll type that in, java-version. And uh, <clears throat> you can see it's, it looks like it's been updated uh, since, uh, since I did the lab. But um, So we're running uh, the 1.8. And then you can also uh, check the compiler version that you have in the path and just do your Java C dash version and that stands for the compiler. So we want to make sure that we can get to these two things and uh, you, you want to make sure that you've got uh, you've got those in your path and um, you know what what you can do uh, to check I mean one thing would be to uh, uh, just you could echo out um, the uh, path, right? You could say echo uh, path, <clears throat> and uh, it's a little tough to see, but it, it's in there. I, I can see some of it here, right? So program files, all right. Uh, oh, that's the Windows Performance Toolkit, but here's the uh, Java JDK. Uh, let's see. Here's program files Java. All right, and uh, another thing that you want to check is the uh, Java. There's a class path and Java home, which is uh, also pretty important. It's Java underscore home, and uh, that's really where it's, it looks like it's getting uh, the runtime from. The JRE is 1.8.0 uh, 32. So make sure you get the latest. Get it from Oracle. Don't download it from any strange place, but Make sure you're running the local uh, version of Java. Then uh, uh, under your user area, I was under user oaks, make a directory called uh, JWS for Java Web Services. Then once you have that directory, um, I've written the uh, you know parts of this already for you. So this is the profile.java. And uh, I put it under the package uh, JWS because that's the directory we're going to put it in. And really, all it's doing it's saying, um, you know, we got a web service here, all right. And and here's the web service uh, kind of attribute. And uh, I've got a, some things set up. I gave it a name and a target namespace profile web service. And then here's the class profile. And all I did was really hard code the values so we could see that we're making a call into it. I set up a constructor just called get profile, get name, get password, and all they're really doing for the gets are just returning the name. And uh, all right, so we've got all our gets. That looks good. And if you wanted to do setters, you could also uh, do setters. So put that in Notepad or whatever your favorite uh, editor, uh, editor might be, and just put in um, all those, uh, all that code. Save it and save the name of the file. Uh, all you want to do is just save it as profile.java, which uh, I show here. And uh, the next file that we need, and it's not too bad actually to get a simple web service. Um, all we're going to need is two files. So this, uh, we want to put it in the same package, JWS, and we're going to create uh, an endpoint. And this is the uh, class uh, web service server. And uh, all I'm really doing inside of main here is I'm binding to my IP address, right, on port 8080. So you need to know what your PC's IP address is. So you want to check that with that IP config that I showed you earlier. So run that and get the IP address and put that in there. Now, if this port is busy, then choose another port. But um, usually 8080 uh, is available. Um, and there's a way to check. Uh, if you wanted to check that, you could say netstat, right? netstat dash a. And uh, that would give us all the ports, but let's just pipe it to find 8080. Nothing comes back, so that's good. We know that that port is, there's no, nothing listening on that port, so we're good. So here is my uh, JWS directory, right? And there's that netstat command, netstat-an, 
pipe it with a vertical bar, find 8080. And uh, all right, so in JWS, if I do a, a listing, right, um, you can see, if we uh, zoom in a little bit, there is my uh, uh, profile.java. And it, when I compiled it, it built it into a class. Here's the uh, web server, web service server, Java source code, and then the class. So that's all we should really need uh, when we do this. <clears throat> so that's really the only change you need to make is put in your IP address of your local machine. Then uh, this is going to basically instantiate a new object for a profile called uh, web service. It sets up the endpoint and all it does is just kind of kick out a little uh, information to the screen. So that's the first step. We had two files, right? One uh, called a class profile and one the class uh, here is called uh, web service server. All right, so good. We just do those two uh, files. We save them. We could just paste them in a notepad and then to compile it. Now notice I'm in users oaks. I'm using the compiler. That's why it has C on the end. I say Java C and I'm telling it to go to the JWS directory and the backslash. And this is the asterisk. It looks like an X, but it's actually an asterisk dot Java. So that will compile all of the dot Java files in that directory. So if that is successful, uh, that's great. Now, the code that I've supplied in these two files here, one that sets up the data and one is the listening uh, web server service, um, that compiles. I know that that works. So just check everything uh, to make sure uh, that you do have Java. You can get to the compiler and you should be okay. So the next step is um, we want to start the web server uh, service. So to do that, um, and I just ran this right here from users oaks, I said java-cp, and then I specified uh, where to run it from, users oaks, jws uh, web service server. And you should see, it should say that it started on the port, and we should see the profile running. So uh, I have both of them here. And... Uh, I'll clear the screen and I already have this in uh, and you can see right here right oh, sorry right here we're just gonna start that up now we're running it now we're not compiling it we already compiled it into the class files now we're gonna run it so let's try to run it and if it all works notice now running locally on my IP address I have uh, on port 8080 uh, Java web service server running so we could check it in the other window right just like we ran that uh, we ran that command before <clears throat> netstat and notice when we run that right we see that on that port on uh, port 8080 on that IP address it is listening just using our netstat dash an pipe it to find 8080 Make sure you put double quotes around it. Okay, so good. Just leave that alone. Leave this running, and that's great. We just want it to keep listening for our requests that are going to come in from Android. So that's step one, is to get the Java web service uh, running. Okay, good. All right, so let's make sure it is indeed uh, working. So what I'm going to do is just kind of open up a browser and type that in just to make sure. So uh, let's, uh, oh, let's uh, we can just grab this. And uh, let's see, we'll just open up a new window. Pop that in. And what we see is what's called the WSDL. So what this tells us, this was served up, and, and again, notice we are running on that port 8080 on that IP address. I asked it to give me the WSDL for profile. So 
that profile class that we created um, is all in here, right? It says that there's a get name, right? There's a get name, right? We can uh, get their profile, we can get their phone number, get their email, okay? So this is very important. We want to make sure that the WSDL is working because when the client, the Android client, uh, goes to use this, it's going to have to uh, get the WSDL. Good. So we have the WSDL. We can move on to the next uh, task at hand. Let's make sure that our UI, and I've given you all the code here for the UI. If you uh, need to put it in there, um, you can cut and paste the UI to make sure that you get it and uh, uh, all right so this is going to put name right which is basically just going to be a label um, that's going to be our text view and then our edit view is uh, kind of below it so we'll have name password email and phone good so uh, let's go to our XML and let's make this a bit bigger all right, so underneath the frame layout, and we are in the grid frame uh, profile area here, I set up a linear layout just so they could uh, be set up in that configuration vertical, uh, and that's one you can see right there. It's a vertical configuration, and uh, we just got our text view, which is our label, then our edit view, then our text view, then... Uh, the password so we got name password email and then phone and just make sure that it uh, shows up in the design and that uh, uh, it looks good now we we can't uh, we can't really see it because it is uh, um, we know there's no errors we can't really see it because right now it is being uh, hidden uh, with the visibility gone right so we're setting the gone um, just so when you click on the profile then it will be visible and all the others will not be all right so good that's the UI part of it There's just four fields shouldn't be too bad uh, to get that wrong the next thing is uh, we need to create a class called profile that is gonna hold the name the password the email and the phone so I created uh, setters and getters, right? So you can see for the profile name, I did a get profile name. And all this really does is just return these, uh, these private variables. Um, you might want to put private probably in front of them too. But uh, <clears throat> right, so um, all these uh, private variables here and uh, then uh, we've got the get uh, profile password set profile password get profile email set profile email so all this has been done it's ready to go um, just create uh, a class in Android and uh, you should be able to just uh, you know paste that in so if we look that's this is what it should look like okay and let's just make sure we put uh, private in front of that. Good. Okay. So <clears throat> here's our class profile. It's really just going to be used to set the name, the password, the email, and the phone number uh, when we need to. So we'll instantiate a profile object, and then we'll be able to get or set the uh, various fields, name, password, email, and phone number. That's all it's being used for. There's nothing really tricky behind it. Good. Okay, so the uh, the next thing that we need to do is uh, there's a jar file. And a jar file is just an archived library of um, Java code. So uh, to do SOAP, we could write it from scratch, but um, why not use... Uh, 
a, a library that has already uh, been created and is proven to work well. So the library, I put the library out on Angel. You can download that. It's just called KSOAP2. Um, I'm sure you could find it on the internet too, but I figured this would be the best one. Uh, I know 2.6 works well, and I uh, tried that. Make sure you use the one with dependencies. Um, and really, you don't have to do much. Um, I did add compile files in here, um, which I put this in the build Gradle. So make sure in your build Gradle that you add uh, compile files under libs and the full name of that jar. So let's, uh, let's see, hold on here. Let's take a look at that. Okay, good. So uh, let's go down. Uh, okay, so in the uh, Build Gradle module app area, uh, you can uh, let's see. Now, for this one, uh, again, uh, it looks like I have it set up uh, to look in the libs and look for all jars. So, uh, as long as that's in there, that should work. Um, I don't think you really need uh, this last one. Uh, so, kind of, this will read in all of the jars that it finds. Um, so, you really don't need that. That must have been a little earlier on when I was doing this. Um, so I'll modify that. Uh, once you add it to uh, the build Gradle, though, you should see um, when you build the project that it is included in there, um, and you should be fine. So it, it it seems tough, but it's really not that hard. So once we have the uh, Queso 2 jar uh, in our libs area, and Gradle kind of knows about it, the next thing we want to do is... Uh, in the main activity, um, we're just going to import uh, all these KSO2 classes. And then the last thing that we need to import is the async task. Whenever we're doing any kind of networking uh, across the internet with Android, you have to make sure right, that we use threading. Um, that way, the application doesn't get in kind of a lock state where the view is kind of locked waiting for some response from the network or the internet. So uh, we're going to set a background thread that's going to go do some work for us and we will still have control of the view. All right, so the next thing is I just set up uh, some uh, constants of namespace and URL and I called it uh, profile web service and I gave it the IP address of my machine, port 8080, profile, uh, and then the WSDL with the question mark uh, separating it. So you could set that up, make sure you change the IP address to match yours. And uh, these are two constants that are needed. So we have to define what the namespace is, and notice it's just profile web service. If we go back to that file that we created, earlier on, remember that's what it was right there, target namespace, um, right? So that's uh, that's there. Okay, so it's not too bad so far. Let me, let's bounce over to the application and uh, let's take a look at that. So I'm in main activity, all right, and let's, uh, let's go up. It's starting to get big. Let's open up the imports. All right, so here is the uh, the case soap. Um, so you want to import that, and the uh, async task is up here, but it doesn't matter where you put it as long as it's in there. All right, so um, here I have the uh, two constants for namespace and URL that are needed, and they're just uh, class level variables uh, constants. Uh, underneath the main activity, right? So you just set those two up right underneath main activity so they're available to anything below it. All right, so, um, yeah. So the, the next thing that we do need, um, make sure that you set up uh, 
edit text and uh, these two uh, these are important um, the edit text will be for a P name for the password the email and the phone number and then uh, we're going to instantiate that profile class that we already created right so we're going to instantiate that uh, also at the class level okay so in the on create method what we want to do is we're going to add um, actually it says we're going to add the following uh, the following objects right so the following objects that we're gonna uh, add are the p name the password the p email and the phone number so again remember we're just looking in the r file and uh, we're trying to find p name p password p email and p phone number which should be on our ui and when it finds these find view by id it's just setting up this p name variable that that we could use uh, later on when we want to populate uh, the screen. So just four fields, right? P name, P password, P email, and P phone number. And make sure you put that in the on create. So let's go over and check it out. So here's on create, and uh, you can see these are the grids here are from before uh, when we we're populating the grids with the database. So these four fields, P name, P password, P email, P phone number, are all, um, they're on the UI, right? When we set up the UI, we created these, and we're going to use that to populate it. And they're all edit text type. That's why we needed them up here. Okay? Good. So, let's see. Where we're at with this. We're almost there. So the next thing we need is the on-click profile. So when you actually click on the profile, what do we want to do? Well, the uh, first thing is we're making some things invisible and not visible, right? We're kind of making these uh, different uh, visibility uh, containers that we need. And that's, there's nothing new there. Uh, this is what's actually new to us. Uh, the download task, this is going to be a new... Uh, inner class we're going to create and I'm just calling this task as an object and then we're going to say uh, execute this task so this is our kind of our background task that's going to call the web service when we click on the on click profile now notice it doesn't update the UI here it's it's again it's a tough concept to understand but what it's going to do it's going to tell it to go run something and whenever it gets that data back it'll update the uh, the view for us but we can continue using the view um, uh, so that it doesn't lock the screen on us okay and that's called threading all right so that's the on click profile uh, so um, oops let's uh, when we're let's take a look at that all right These are all our on clicks, on click activities, on click friends. So here is on click uh, profile. So we're when we click on that navigational element profile, we're going to set the visibility of the other uh, containers, and then we're going to uh, execute this inner class. So um, when you see this class here, it's a private class and it's called download task and it's extending async task now notice I'm not really passing anything into it I just kinda of made it all void I'm telling it to do something in the background and uh, it's a little lengthy but it's just kinda of repetitive all we're doing here is creating the name password email and phone number so I'm calling uh, this soap request right um, for each one because there's a get name, get password, get email, and get phone number. If we go back, right, to look at what we set up back a ways ago, right here, um, remember we created a get name, a get password, and a get email, and a get phone number. So we're going to make four, 
let's see, one, two, three, four separate web service calls to populate the, uh, the data, right? Let's see where we're at here. Okay. So here's our four, we're setting them up, okay? We're saying, okay, we're gonna call get name, get password, get email, and get phone number. Then uh, we basically create the envelope with using SOAP, right? It uses a, an envelope and then the payloads inside of it. We're gonna create the envelope. Then um, we set up the URL that we're gonna talk to. That was our constant that we already set up. And uh, here's gonna be what we get back in our request uh, results request soap. Now we're just starting it out, uh, initializing it to null. So then what I do is I get each one, the profile name, profile password. So <clears throat> if you look at this, and then here is the email and then the phone. So these are separate soap requests. I'm calling uh, each one, right? So we're doing the get name, get password, get email, get phone and we're calling into that web service and then what we do is we get data back now we don't know when we get the data back but if we do have any errors with networking we catch them and we send it out to the, the system I mean you could do some other things you could toast some nice message if you wanted to and uh, then the other method uh, here on post execute so this tells it go do something in the background this one then when this is done doing whatever we told it to do this fires off um, when it's complete so if you told it to go uh, you know say go get the uh, profile name whenever that comes back now it's gonna set the text for P name for P password for P email and for the uh, P phone and it's going to use that with the getters so remember we created a class uh, called profile so the class profile um, I'm setting when we get the uh, when we get the values back right we're going to set those properties right here set the profile phone set the profile email right so we're going to set all those using the setters and then here we're going to use the getters right so here's our getters and then the setters are up here so if you look at this up top here when we when we create that pro um, object and we created it a little uh, ways back uh, it was right you know what it was here when we looked at it right right here okay so when you create the pro that's when we're using it uh, down here it's just our profile object used to set and get the values when we get them back from the soap request so here I'm telling it to set right when it gets the property back set it set it and set it and then after we get it we tell it to get the profile when we're done and then we actually set it on the UI using the set text okay and that's really they're all all there is to it there's just two methods inside that inner class called download task it does a do in background which uses is basically used to set up the four web services it calls them it receives the results then it populates the entity profile. The on post executes, it populates the frame view by getting those profile values back out and it sets the name, password, and email. Now the last thing that you want to check before you go running this is make sure in your Android manifest that you have Android.permissions set uh, for the internet. Because if you don't, this isn't going to work. Okay? So just quickly some gotchas in this uh, lab and you know hopefully if it, it works it should look like this and you should see the request um, come in uh, uh, here when it's uh, when it's sorry the other one um, when it's running 
right so right now it's running it's, it's serving up any requests uh, that might come in so uh, yeah just make sure that that uh, um, can go back here just just to review real quick we set up uh, well first we made sure we had Java uh, the runtime and the compiler set up and then we could get to them with our, our pass we created a simple uh, Java web service we uh, then set up the uh, the profile user interface which we see right here we created a new profile entity class we then add it to the main activity class a few things like the case soap um, the UI profile fields the on click method and then the last thing we did we set up an inner private class called download task with two methods and uh, it's it's a tough lab uh, I'm sure um, because uh, again you know we're in the 10th 10th uh, lab so uh, things should get a little more uh, uh, challenging for you guys if you have any problems with it let me know have fun